sorry about the <laughs> Okay, so I think we've got it here now. So this is our last get together here on Zoom for the course. So I have just a few things I wanted to go over as kind of an overview and hopefully you'll take this home for you uh, with you and I know you've learned a lot and I, I'm really uh, appreciate your comments and everything as we went through the course. Uh, and so some things are so important in life and the big questions are the big ones. So if you take a deep breath, you ask those big questions, you know, who am I? Why am I here? How am I here? And the whole connection of human psychology with human biology and the web of life that supports us. Human biology does not exist without our web of life. And so looking at a few of these things, um, the web of life is all connected and it's really according to Einstein and everything that we've studied, it's basically one big ball of energy that's totally connected throughout time. It's an eternal ball of energy we are part of and it's constantly interchanging. And our brains, uh, our logic of our brains have a really hard time getting a handle on that. And so uh, throughout our studies of culture and religions and psychology, uh, we have have learned that the, basically it's scientifically accurate that our atoms and energy are constantly uh, interchanging and interconnected. And basically it's an eternal cycle of creative energy constantly throughout this whole earth moving. And it's quite interesting and of course extremely complex and fun to study. Uh, so our web of life that we are part of, that these bodies right now are part of, that we are experiencing, um, is breaking down because basically too many humans are consuming the earth, uh, our habitat destruction, and we've learned all about this, biodiversity loss, pollution, air of the air, water, and soil, and of course climate change. So all of these, not just climate change, are a problem because the web of life is so interconnected and there it's one big ball of energy. You can't just, just damage some of it and expect the rest of it to survive. And most of it's changing so rapidly because of excessive energy use of us humans. We've been having way too much fun uh, with all this energy uh, and very little wisdom in the use of that energy. And I've uh, given you the PowerPoint slides of uh, how everything, every single thing we buy and every single thing we make is part of this uh, connect a web of destruction. So, you know, this shawl that I have on, you know, had to be the threads were made in a factory somewhere and put together and uh, trucks had and uh, uh, the factory had to be made. Uh, and we've gone through all this pollution at every step of the way, uh, black top to move the trucks, all of that for just to make one thing. And so we've become so disconnected with our web of life that we just think, oh, wow, this is on sale. I'm going to buy it. And we do. And uh, uh, that's unfortunate and things are changing rapidly and we see are seeing this in our lifetime these rapid changes and we're seeing some major tipping points that are happening right now and we've studied these and uh the you know the the glaciers are melting and uh, which warms up the ocean and the oh, it's uh, put it's dumping a lot of our fresh water into the oceans the jet stream is changing the uh the whole um currents of the ocean are changing, all kinds of things are changing really rapidly because our population is so high uh, and we're consuming so much. I really like this, uh, this slide here. It says, if you really think the environment is less important than the economy, try holding your breath while you count your money. Uh, and this is what we really should be doing. And, uh, and we really have to appreciate our, our web of life way more than we um, appreciate all our shawls or whatever it is that we like to buy. So our cultures, our education, our economy, and our religions have really failed us by separating us from nature. So it might have been okay to separate us from nature, you know, 2,000 years ago when most, most of these religions came into focus, uh, but uh, because we hadn't destroyed much of it. But then we found this source of energy that made us uh, really go crazy, and now things are uh, really changing, and we've learned a lot of really nasty stuff. I mean, every time we study the environment, there's worse news 
out there. And so we have to go, our, our civilization, our webs are, are, are collapsing. And basically we go through these five stages of grief. And the first one is denial. And some people will go and in fact, probably have the population will die with denial. And, uh, and either, and then the next stage of course is anger at somebody else having caused it uh, when every one of us is part of it. Uh, bargaining, depression and acceptance. So the last stage is acceptance. And uh, hopefully I've brought you through a whole lot of these different uh, things of what's going on so that you can accept that these things are really happening. And, uh, and then we just have to do with it. We have to rebel against extinction and ad adapt deeply to the things that are happening. We know these things are happening. We know migration is increasing. Right now, there's a huge storm, a uh, hurricane, you know, the, the num numbers of them have gone across the uh, South America and those people are without homes and they're gonna be migrating. and. Uh, and things are changing really rapidly because of all kinds of um, environmental webs breaking down. And so what does it mean to be human? I'm gonna post this web, uh, this PowerPoint uh, by itself too for you. And you can look at this um, very nice for just a 12 minute discussion on the human footprint human footprint, it's pretty good. But we really have to accept reality now. We have to, and and be joyful with it. I mean, we are alive today and we get to be on this planet. This is an amazing planet. Uh, we have to understand that our experience comes from within, it, within us and we are given opportunities every single day uh, to get closer to nature and to get closer to each other. So every time you see an opportunity to get closer to nature and get closer to each other, that's far more important than your opportunity to read the news because it drives you nuts. So we need to live in harmony with nature and our global community. We know that chaos causes transformation. It's in a lot of ancient philosophies and uh, everything with uh, fires and, uh, and even in the, in the uh, Christian religion. So this is in the Hindu religion. And then there's the phoenix comes through the flames. In the Hindu religion, it's, it's Shiva. That's the god of uh, death and rebirth. And there has to be a transformation going on. And so uh, we are going through a gigantic transformation, a global transformation, and things are happening all over. And again, we just have to use every minute of our life to uh, to do what's important. We are part of this web of life. So we have to accept what is and some people will awaken and uh, like I said, a lot of people will not and it's we can't decide we can't judge anybody else because they're not where we are because they haven't had the opportunities to learn. Uh, to, and they can't just can't accept you know the things that are changing a lot of people uh, never accept that they're going to die and we know everybody dies well not only every person dies but every civilization dies uh, everything that on uh, that has to do with life goes through stages of birth and growth and then death and then rebirth. And so for anything to be reborn, there has to be death of something else. Those nutrients, that energy has to become available for something else. And we're just going through one of those great transformations. And so if we uh, are going to survive uh, as, as a species at all, uh, we have to recognize what it is that we, uh, how did we cause this transformation to begin with? What are the problems that we caused? And, uh, and how could we live in better harmony? What could we see as a new birth, a, re, uh, a reorganization of our human species? And so we have to look at nature first. We know that we destroyed it this time. This is a problem. And so can we, is, if there's any left of it, we will have to uh, look at nature first. And we have to recognize we cannot survive without nature. Um, and so just a few other things. We have to know where we're going in life. Who are we? What are, how are we part of this web? We, every one of us is, is a little piece of it. And we can't say, oh, I'm just not important. I don't need to be here. Or I'm, I'm more important than anybody else. And, you know, we're just part of this web of life. But we have to recognize what's enough is enough as far as consumption goes. Uh, we may already be where we're supposed to be. In fact, probably are, all of us are right where we're supposed to be. And we have these wonderful opportunities uh, to choose each day, uh, stay up each morning. So um, this is 
basically one how I look at life. I accept that I am part of this web of life and I am made for these times. You are made for these times. We wouldn't be here if we weren't. Uh, and so uh, waking up to live consciously, to live gratefully, creatively, and in harmony with each other uh, is the big challenge of our time to wake up every morning and, and smile. It's, oh my gosh, I'm alive again. <laughs> you know, it's, and to have the opportunities that we do have to help each other and help nature. And so again, you know, take a bit deep breath, thank the trees and be grateful for life. And that's a, a big part of, of hopefully what I've brought across in this class. So there are there any questions about the course in general? And Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to give you a few questions directly from the final exam. So I'm going to share the screen again with these questions. So I'm glad that you came and those people who actually came and or at least go over this will get these questions. So these are questions directly from the final exam. Uh, so the first one is which of the following is not a greenhouse gas? And these are some, these are the possibilities on the exam. And we've studied that, uh, of course, carbon dioxide is obvious. One of these things, uh, one of the things that I want you to be careful with when you take these tests or any multiple choice test is when you get a not it's always it that trips a lot of people so be careful so choose go to each one of these answers and look at them as if they are true or false question and so kind of in your mind or on a sheet of paper say uh, is this answer true or false is this answer true or false and so on and which is not a significant greenhouse gas the answer is uh, we know the, the true so the answer is actually a so I'm going to go to b first so we know it's true that carbon dioxide is greenhouse gas we know that water of vapors, a greenhouse gas, that methane is, that nitrogen dioxide is a greenhouse gas, but nitrogen and air, N2, is one that we study that is not a greenhouse gas, or, uh, and so that is the answer for that one. Um, so be careful with the not questions and treat them like one at a time as a true or false and, and go through and eliminate uh, most of them that way. The second question here is every time energy is used, it degrades as heat in factories and homes and the cells of organisms. The amount of energy available to transfer from an organism on one trophic level to the other. So remember that big food pyramid are the different trophic levels and the amount of energy that goes from one level to the next is only about 10%. And that's the answer for that one. So which the next question is, which of the following is true about the human population? And basically the answer for this one is C, the human population at near 8 billion today is way over carrying capacity and is destroying the global web of life. You probably would have got that one without uh, me giving you the answer, but that's a pretty, uh, pretty easy one. Then this one, here's which answer contains the best ways to reduce birth rates globally. And the best way is, let's see, was that one, is free effective contraception, good education, and good career choices for women. So remember, it's not about the men so much. It's the women that uh, it's their bodies and they decide to make the choices and uh, good contraception, really effective uh, contraception needs to be available on a global basis. Good education and good career choices for women are especially important. So that's the answer for that. The next question is the best choice to improve our energy problems and reduce the effect on the biosphere is to, of course, reduce consumption. So hopefully that would have been a no brainer for you, that that is the most important thing we need to do. And then the last one is probably the most, in question, uh, most important question on the final exam or for the course is humanity is facing a global crisis it has never faced before. Uh, most, most of our population wants to deny or ignore it so we can continue our consumptive lifestyle. Hey, I like my stuff, you know, I don't want to give it up. The ecosystems around us are being destroyed exponentially. Our very survival depends upon a healthy web of life we are part of. What are the three most important global problems that we need to face now to improve the chances of any future, <laughs> much less a good future for Homo sapiens? 
And if you go through these, if you look at these, let's see, um, I think I haven't looked at all of these, but I, let's see, human population. Okay, so the most important, so you, again, you have to look at, uh, to look at the most to most improve. And so these questions may, the answers may not be in the same order that they are in the test. So be careful about that. In fact, they'll probably be in a different order on the test. But the answer for this one is human population control, reducing consumption and putting nature first. And that really should be first. Putting nature first is because if we put nature first, we will automatically uh, control our own populations and reduce consumption. And so those are the most important. And using government and cultural rules to do that is really important too. So this is why we needed to vote for and get uh, politicians in there that at least will help to think about this and to make more rules. So those are the, some of the questions on the test. Any questions about those? Uh, how many questions altogether would it be? It's 40. It's the same as all the other multiple choice tests. And so it's just, it's just test five. It'll count the same as all your other tests. And uh, hopefully if you do better on this one than you did on another test, you'll bring your av overall average up. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so um, I guess I will, I've got to stop sharing and let's see. I'm gonna stop the recording here.